The gospel which Jesus preached when he was on this earth and we cannot separate the gospel from gospel message from the health message. <coughs> so we have to believe and trust God's word and we have to have faith in Jesus Christ. Now let's turn our Bibles. Now I would like to recite the three angels' message from the book of Exodus, from the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verses 6 to 12. Before I would recite, I would like to pray in its spirit. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this day. Father, as as I'm going to recite your word, the three angels message, please help me so that I, and give me your Holy Spirit so that I may recite it correctly for your great and glory. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. Amen. A few minutes ago, we listened to the sermon of a small boy. Is your name Rashawn? The other. You're eight years old, right? His parents are medical missionaries. A few days ago, I was able to meet him. He is one who is being homeschooled and he's receiving a faith education. It seems that he is receiving a good education following the example of his parents. This work of medical missionary work is the work that goes all the way till when we receive the latter rain. The latter rain will fall uh, as the third angel's message is shared. Medical missionary work that is going out together with a third angel's message message um, has the promises of God. It would be wonderful if we can rear our children just like Roshan. 
Um, perhaps it's these kind of children that will participate in the latter rain movement. As I have been uh, traveling to Southeast Asia and to India, and also to many other countries, including America, Canada, etc. Within our Adventist church, we have medical missionary training happening. Um, these days, there are many things that we are able to see in the church that we haven't been able to see for many uh, until now. In many places, they are having medical missionary seminars. Even in Korea, the um, health and temperance director of the union is also doing this training. Why do you think that this, this medical missionary movement is is starting and um, propelling as a movement. And there are many people even here who are part of this work. Uh, as I did um, this seminar in Thailand, there were people from many different countries, leaders who were teaching these kinds of things who gathered at the seminars. And because they were already doing medical missionary work, they had an interest in learning about the three angels' message that goes together with medical missionary work. Because in the spirit of prophecy, it says that this medical missionary work should be one body with the third angel's message. And so people come because they're, they're curious about how uh, people can become healed through the gospel. And so I was able to see um, them receive the light and share testimonies from the light they've received. I see this as the work that God is, is doing. If you look in part two of the textbooks you have, um, there is the information regarding medical missionaries. It says that this earth is a vast Lazar house. This means that this world is going to be filled with people who are diseased. And so therefore, that's why we need to do medical missionary work. Those who need the gospel and those who need eternal life, they are the ones who are filled with sicknesses. This world is going to become a greenhouse of diseases. In greenhouses, um, the plants grow very well in there. But they're saying, they're describing this earth as a greenhouse of disease. This atmosphere that we live in, it is causing disease to grow. And so these diseases cannot be healed through medication. Uh, it is told that in the future, this whole world is going to be filled with these, this, these kinds of diseases that cannot be cured by medication. 
Why is this kind of world being created, being made? Why are people becoming sick? Because they don't know God. It is because they are breaking the laws of God. Satan is, the, is doing the work that causes us to be separated from the law of life. And as a result, people are suffering and they are dying. And so these days, there is not one family that does not have at least one person who's sick. Even those people who think that they're healthy now, in some, some day, it may just appear suddenly. The world that we live in is a world that has become a greenhouse of disease. <laughs> Satan is separating us from God, which is life, and is leading us towards death. And so people are leaving God's law and living against God, transgressing God's law. Uh, this has become the world of eating and drinking and giving and um, being in marriage. This helps us to remember the times of Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah. This is a warning to us that God's judgment is at hand. But can the people of God who have the three angels' message just sit still? Are we just going to look at these people dying in the world because of disease and just look at them? In order to save them, we are using an instrument, a tool to save them. The health message is that the one kind of instrument that helps them to receive that saving. It is through the health message that we can help them to see God. They will search for God because they have a need that needs to be filled. People who are sick, they want to be healed. And so if there is a way to healing, they will choose all of those ways. <coughs> we need to introduce the maker to them. The topic of the maker heals is the everlasting gospel. It is the everlasting gospel. The one who created us will redeem us. This is the gospel from the Sabbath. In the first angel's message restores the worship of the Sabbath to the creator. The three angels' message that restores uh, the Sabbath and turns people to the Creator people will be able to know that the one who heals them is the Creator. But it is only when you have the gospel that you are able to share the gospel. If I truly believe in the Creator, then I could introduce Him to others. Somebody who prayed earlier prayed a prayer like this. They prayed. Jesus, I really want to do this, but my heart is not ready, not convicted to do this. The heart that desires to serve those who are dying in their sins, 
우리가 예수님을 내 마음에 영접했을 때에 만난 마음이라고. It's the the heart that we receive when we accept Jesus as our Savior. 그래서 영원한 복음을 가지면 복음을 전하게 되는 것이. And so if you receive, if you have the everlasting gospel, then you will share the everlasting gospel. 아, 여러분 지금 얼마든지 동도로 가는 이웃들에게 봉사할 수 있습니다. Everyone here can serve those neighbors around you who are sick. As you've learned, as you've come here, you found that there is nothing that's too difficult, right? You just need to teach them how to utilize the remedies that are found in our daily lives. All the remedies that God has given us are found in our daily living. And so through my experience, I'll tell you how we can face these patients. When I first started the work, I invited people to my home so, to, uh, so I could take care of them, but then I also visited them in their homes. Uh, there was a, a deaconess from a neighboring church that heard about this news and called me. Uh, she lived about 20 minutes away by car. She said, um, there's a really um, pitiful young man in my village. Could you please come and help him? And so I wanted to bring him to my home and I asked, what kind of disease does he have? He had tuberculosis. At that time, um, tuberculosis patients were not easily cured. These days, there's medication that you take for tuberculosis and you can get cured right away, but 30 years ago, they didn't have that medication available. They took the medication there was back then, but they would not be healed. At that time, I had some patients already staying in my home, so I couldn't bring a tuberculosis patient into my home because it would be contagious to those other patients. And so I went to visit his home. When I visited their home, I found out that their house was um, under a lot of shade. Uh, their house was in the countryside, and there were huge pine trees uh, shading the, the houses. And so this one house was inside this pine forest. And the young man, he was sitting, he was laying down in a room that had no windows. And the uh, doors to the, the room, rooms were also shut, shut tightly. When I opened up the, the door and entered into the room, there was a very strong odor that came out. The, the young man was laying down in his bed and his, his face was really white. And he had no, barely any skin and he looked like a skull. And he laid down, he couldn't even sit up and he just turned his head a little bit. And so because I couldn't breathe in that room, I opened up that door and sat and talked with him. But I heard about his disease from his mother. When he was in, the young man was in elementary school, his father passed away due to tuberculosis. 
His father passed away, but this young man got the tuberculosis uh, germs from his father. He was 27 years old, and he had not been cured from this, that disease for all those years. And they went and searched for all different kinds of medications that might heal his disease. They, uh, <laughs> they got more, he got worse and worse and worse. And he was getting medication from the uh, local health clinic, but it was causing his stomach to become destroyed. And even when he just ate porridge, it would not digest and he would, um, he would have diarrhea. And so what nutrition, um, what nutrition went in his body, it was eaten up by the tuberculosis germs, and so he didn't get the nutrition he needed, that's why he was so thin. And so because the mother knew that uh, the medication was not working to heal her son, she clung onto her God. The mother was a Buddhist believer. She would go frequently to the temple and uh, beg the, the gods to help her son. And in one part of her house, she had a Buddha statue. And every day she would pray that her son might be healed. But her son was not healed and he just continued to get worse. After I heard their entire story, I told the mother this. I told her, the God that you are praying to cannot heal your son. But there is a God that can heal your son. And so she asked, who is that God? He is the one who has created humans. He is the one who has created this entire world. Do you think that this earth, this world, just came into existence by chance? Do you think that people just existed from nothing? In this world, there is nothing that has just been made from nothing. Even the clothes that I'm wearing has been created by somebody. There is a maker who made my shoes. And there's somebody who has built this home. No matter what kind of thing there is or substance, it is, it is in existence because somebody made it. <clears throat> but as we look at the family line, the, um, the people who have come before them, the father, the grandfather, etc., etc., et who is at the beginning? <laughs> who is at the very top of the beginning? We have Adam. And who do we have before Adam? God. We have a creator. The creator has allowed people to be born and to be born and born in all the next generations, and that's why they exist. <coughs> the one who has made people can heal them. When you pray to that God, and when you do what that God says for you to do, then your son may be healed. <clears throat> I said, ma'am, do you have the desire to pray to this God and to do what he says so your son can get better? <clears throat> 
She said, yes, I will. <laughs> But that God does not like for people to serve other gods also. <clears throat> He said, do not make any other gods, do not pray to any other gods. Would you, do you want to obey his words? And she said, yes. Then we need to take all those things that are, are placed on the walls and, and throw them all out. Do you think you can do this? After a pause, she said, If my son can be healed, I can do this. Can you um, move into actions what you, what you believe by faith? What would happen if you say this, but God does not heal the person? Of course, we need faith in order to say these words. That is not faith that's generated from myself. It is the faith that the Creator God gives to me. And so she took out all the things off of the walls and put it in her front yard. We helped and, take to, and took all of those different items about, uh, that are related to Buddha and took them out to the front yard. <laughs> and so I asked her, is there anything else that needs to be burned? And so she said, oh yes, um, in, the, in her son's pillow, they had some kind of um, superstitious paper or something there. <laughs> And so they took that out. And so we put it all into the front yard and burned it all. And, so, and afterwards, we gathered the family into the, the living room of the home and we had a worship. We opened up Genesis chapter 1 and introduced the Creator to them. When God created people, He created everything that they would need before, being, uh, before they were created. This is the heavens and the earth, the seas, the air, the plants, everything. God has made everything beforehand so that we can eat and drink and sleep and wake up and live. And if we accept these and apply them, then we can live. But if we do not accept these uh, practices and we do not follow them, then we will lose our health. But these healing remedies have already been provided for ahead of time. And I told you that the everlasting gospel is the fact that our salvation has been provided for ahead of time. Our healing remedies have already been provided for during the time of creation. Where is there a better, where are there better remedies? Our Creator God has made these remedies that have no side effects for us ahead of time. And so I had to teach them the life uh, in which they can learn how to follow uh, as, as taught in creation. Our prayers are answered when we pray in faith.
그리고 이제 내일부터 어떻게 해야 되는지 그 아주머니에게 다 가르쳐 줬어요. And the next day, I told the I taught the lady how she should um, live her life the next day. 그때가 아주 초여름이라 아주 바깥 날씨가 따뜻하고 좋았습니다. It was uh, the beginning of summer, and so the temperature was nice and warm. 그리고 그 집이 시골에 있었기 때문에 산 옆에 있었어요. And because they were living in the countryside, their house was next to a little mountain. 그래서 제가 저 산에 소나무 밑에다가 자리를 하나 갖다 깔고 아이들 업어다가 그 집에다가 눕혀 놓으라고 했어요. And I told her to um, take her son on and piggyback him, and then take him up the hill and place a mat. On the hill and allow him to lay down there. Because all the son had been doing was laying down, not moving, not exercising, he couldn't function. If you do not move your body, if you do not exercise, then your, your body will start dying. It is through exercise that we can have circulation that leads to life. And so I told her the next day to take her son to the top of that hill and to lay him down there and come back home and clean the house. Clean, wash the clothes and the blankets and anything that the sun uses, wash it clean and hang it out to dry in the sunshine. And open up all the doors and windows and allow the air to come in and the sunshine to come in to clean out the house. And in, in the evening, take those blankets that have been washed and dried in the sunshine and laid on the bed, and then bring the son back home, uh, wash him, give him clean clothes, and lay him down inside on his bed. And because, um, and she said, don't take any medication, and don't even give him the porridge because he's just, um, it's just coming out as diarrhea anyway. He's not getting the nutrients, so just give him water. The best, best medicine for this patient was drinking water. And um, he needed to lay down in the sunshine. And he needed to breathe in the oxygen from outside. Where are there any better remedies than those? They are the remedies that God has prepared ahead of time. And so the uh, mother followed and did that work all day the following day. The following evening, I went to visit, the, visit them again, and I checked to see if she had followed what I told her to do. And I told her to do the same thing the next day. I had worship with them, and then I returned to my home. And then on the third day, I visited them one more time. And then I saw that the face of the, the young man was looking pink. This, boy, this young man who had been laying down in the bed because he was on top of the mountain, he started to move around. Because he was placed underneath the, the pine trees, the shade caused him to become cold, and so he started crawling out to the sunshine. People receive strength based upon their need. If patients stop using their strength, then they lose their strength, but if they have a need, they get stronger. Um, the mother had left the son on the mountain, on the, on the hillside there, and she didn't come, and so she, he got cold. 
And because he could see the sunshine just a few feet away, he would crawl over to the sunshine. And if he would get hot while he was under the sunshine, he would crawl back into the shade. And then he drank the water that his mother brought him, and he exercised. As he started to crawl back and forth a few times, he started being able to be able to sit up and stand up. And the following day after that, he had enough strength to be able to come down that hill. The next day, he walked up the hill himself. The more the body moves, the more it starts reviving. Helping patients so that they don't do actions themselves is causing them uh, more troubles. Patients need to try to do things themselves. The people that the patients need to depend on are not their family members, it's God. Patients need to depend completely on God and what they can do, they need to do themselves. As they move, as they exercise, as they do work, they are doing exercise that leads them to revive. And so then we started feeding, um, we started feeding the young men healthy foods. After just um, giving the young man water for a day or two, we started giving him food together with uh, fruits. About one week later, when I visited them, um, the young man came back and sit from the, the hill there and said, "Oh, today I helped a, a neighbor, a neighbor um, pull some weeds from her, her garden." And then the following day after that, she said, oh, I helped the lady uh, pull out weeds in two, two different plots. And I said, oh, you did such a good thing. Tomorrow, do more. And so the neighbor, she was so happy that somebody was helping her doing some, do something difficult. Um, yeah, they were so happy. Is there any kind of better manual labor than helping somebody pull out the weeds and do their farming? Uh, they receive sunshine while they're doing this. And by sweating, they, they get rid of their waste. Cute. And um, you breathe in, um, you breathe in the things that come from the, the dirt. Within all created things, by God, there are remedies. Touching the dirt, smelling the, the fumes from the dirt, and working and, and smelling the, um, the, the grass. And um, as he was working for, um, in the land, he was taking in all the good things from the land and um, excreting all the waste products inside his body. And so he would go home and take a, a bath and become clean and wear clean clothes. And every day they would take out the blankets and dry them in the sunshine. And they opened up all the doors and the windows so that fresh air and sunshine could enter the rooms. And then they would drink clean water. They would go to sleep early. And 
and um, feed, and they would we'd feed them healthy food so that their digestive system could um, become healed little by little. Do you think that he survived? Yes. Do you think somebody could survive just by doing this? That's all I did for him. There's nothing that I really did for him. We worship God, obey God, and I told them that when you do this, God will heal you. God is the one who has created this world, and He's the one who has created man. And so doing what God says is the most beneficial for us. And after about one month, his disease was compu completely cured. And what was left is just like a skull on his face with hardly any skin. Oh, he started to get, get, get some skin there. And his skin returned to a color that was a very healthy tone. After a, about a week, I went to go visit them, and I couldn't recognize him because he had, he had gained weight. And so I asked, have you been eating too much? And are, are you swollen? Uh, but as I would um, poke his skin, it wasn't, that he was, it wasn't that he was swollen. But how is it that he had been able to gain that weight in such uh, a short time? He said, the food that I'm eating is digesting so well, and I am gaining strength. Uh, later on, I asked a doctor, how is it possible that this young man was able to heal so quickly and gain that weight? They say that when the tuberculosis germ dies, then they are able to gain weight and recover quickly. But the remedies that kill this tuberculosis germ is all found in nature. And so that whole family um, got baptized and beca became Adventist church members. About a year later, the mother brought the son to my house. She said, um, Mrs. Choi, since you helped to heal my son, can you also please help him find a wife? <laughs> and so I replied, it is not me that has healed your son, it is God who has healed your son. So since God healed your son, he will also be the one to find a wife for your son. <laughs> I cannot uh, play matchmaker to somebody that I don't know. I was able to play matchmaker for you with God, to matchmake God with you because I know God. Because God is one you can trust. And when you obey his word, there will, be, there will definitely be blessings that follow. And because I know God so well, I was able to introduce him to you. But I don't really know people well. There's not really people that I can have faith in. And therefore, I cannot introduce someone to you. God knows best, so I know he will give you the right match. And so I sent them home. But the pastor of the church, he sent that young man to get a job at the factory, one of our um, Adventist-owned factories. And while he was working there, he met an Adventist um, co-worker, and he married her. 
And they had a son and a daughter, and they continued to live happily. And、um, the, his age is probably now well over 50, maybe close to 60. And their children have already grown up. Our God is living. If you truly know the Creator God who is living, you will share Him. The three angels share the Creator God. It is sharing, proclaiming the Creator God. Because many people don't know the Creator. It's because they don't know the Creator that they have fallen into idol worship. They are worshiping a false god that cannot give them life and cannot give them salvation. They are serving a god that they don't even know. And so God says, Share the Creator with every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. If you return to the Creator, there will be healing in Him. He is not one to just provide healing for us, but He is the one to provide eternal life. He allows us to be healed from、uh, natural means. And in order to be healed spiritually, He has sent us Jesus Christ. This is a complete remedy for complete health. Please take this medicine and return home. And please send a message of salvation to those who are dying. Please teach those who are dying in, and suffering in sin and teach them the natural laws. To do this work, you don't need money and you don't need skills. If you don't have space inside your homes to bring people in, go to their homes. And so, medical missionaries need to enter every home. Ellen White says. When the Sunday law is enacted, we can go to visit each home and share the three angels' message. And the doors will be open for medical missionaries to work. If you have this experience as a medical missionary, you can share the gospel with anyone. When I meet anyone in any part of the world, I can share this gospel, this medical missionary work, work with them. The reason why I'm able to come all the way to India in front of you is because of the health message. You didn't call me to listen to my preaching, did you? There are so many very、uh, worthy pastors who can preach sermons. You didn't invite me just to hear my sermons. You wanted to learn how my disease can be healed. Oh, if you go to that person's seminar, your health will be recovered. You have come to see me because of the health message, right? And the fact that I'm going to many different countries is because of the health message. But have I only given you the health message? I am giving you the everlasting gospel. So, do you think you can do this work? Yes. And so the 
pathway, the road to be able to share with every town, with every city, with every um, people is open to us. In the future, when the doors close to the gospel ministry, the work that, that will last until the end is medical missionary work. In that time, it may be different for pastors to receive invitations to speak, but medical missionaries will be invited to other countries and they will be even able to enter even into palaces. Because this world is filled with disease. This is a time for medical missionaries to arise. I hope that you will become medical missionaries that share the everlasting gospel. Okay.